and Dean Dumas had going on. But I wonder if they bring in um, if they bring in Robin. Does Robin op? Because I know Benji picks up the op every once in a while, but Den DD and formerly a lot of this team was team property. They never opt, really ever. Um, and you know that can be sort of a problem. Uh, not having the, a strong opping role. I mean, I guess Dignitas is getting by. MSL picks it up every now and again, but we'll often just see them never pick up an op. Well, we'll see. And yeah, we'll find As out here pretty shortly. Start off. About to go up. Start with that utility. A couple decoys, armor for the rest of the boys on Ents. It'll be Berg with the nade and a kit. Berg, actually, a player we didn't really mention. He can really show up, but sometimes he's just not there at all. Not present. So inconsistent, but he can put up some massive numbers, and that could definitely be uh, a big part of Dendidi's performance today, and perhaps maybe even Entz's downfall. We didn't make our predictions. I still have to lean to Entz. I'm going to say 2-1, but if Entz don't win this series, I'm never picking them as the victor again. I'll go 2-0 just to, to be to different. Just to get off the fence. There's the Bird. Yeah. Good opening there, taking out Alu, but the attention is really going to be at A, it seems like, but, I mean, DenDD with that kill, not forced to rotate or move around at all, so they still have two at A, and, uh, you know, two players that drop down here could quickly rotate. Flash, start trying to, oh, maybe didn't go far enough, but it doesn't matter, the room is clear, Ridman is watching Sype, I will work on that, watching the exit, sometimes hard not to read the names, as Benji playing a close corner with a USP. Giving up his range advantage with these default pistols. He will be gunned down where he stood, but send a beautiful shot. Oh, my. The bomb's going to go down. It's on the hood of the car. And Sype rotating in gets two more, I believe, from the connector doors. So, DenDD, the pistol round, it is theirs. Yeah, it's always nice when you can just pick up a free kill so early in the round like that, which means that now you have a five on four and you're not really forced to make any movement. So, you can just kind of hold your positions and just ride it out and... While they did lose a player up close in the mid slope, other than that, they you know maintained good trades and were able to take it. So up 1-0 now. They will upgrade, of course. A couple of SMGs coming into play, or well, four of them coming into play actually. Just Zendo with the M4 and and support's gonna force, and they're looking to just attack this dropper as quick as possible. And they do take Ridman out, so they have something to work with. Oh, Alex took a nade to the shoulder, and the explosion did take him down. I think it may have actually been a secondary grenade that went in. As we've got Zart trying to push a player on the B platform. That was Robin who will fall. Berg's able to clean that up with the MP7. Three members survive once again. Dendidi will not fall to the force by and the drop room shenanigans that Ents brought to the table in round two. And it's on yeah. to the next one. Yeah, I mean, once Ridman fell, it was a team ace from the rest of the team. Robin with two. So, you know, really nice response. Even though they suffered a casualty pretty early, everyone else is able to make the proper adjustment and put a stop to that push. They will get the 2-0 start, and this round should be much easier, even less to work with for Ents now as they save up for the opening rifle round. And again, they will be gathering up over towards B. Pretty common meta to this map. As we're hopping, gonna get some free damage right now through the smoke on the two players. Sanitol with that up. Wow, actually gets, well, two and a half. Berg's nade brought down Stonda, but Robin might have had him anyways. Now Berg with the AUG. Whose AUG is this? It's Bergs. He finds one kill with it, one kill with the HE, and yeah. we're on to round four. Guess I didn't get the memo. We, we weren't doing MLG stuff anymore. Playing some Call of Duty over there is Berg. Yo, the AUG actually is really good. I like it. It's pretty dope. It's pretty dank. We are going to see Ribbon picking up the AUG. Uh, so right, that so answers some of your questions about who might be does. fulfilling that role now. Donda, of course, picking it up for Ents as they set up fairly default now. Two towards B, three towards A. So this is about as default as it gets. As Yuho and Alu will look to get control of long A. All push then DD back and use that to deny information. But Zart's also picked up a kill onto Berg in the process. Zenda on the counter boost might try to go for this trade. Intent to hold for now. Ooh. Dark. Think. The Dink comes out, but Zart will live with 9 HP. He's got two kills already. Things not looking good for Dendidi. Robin now with that AUG. Picked it up from Berg's body, trying to hold on. Vanilla AUG, too. Oh, scopes out just at the wrong time, but gets one through the smoke, crossing into the site. Will scope again. Headshot onto Sunny. Robin has brought this back. Two at three versus three. Everyone for Ants has now dropped off the B platform. Actually, no, one's still up there. 
I believe that's going to be Stonda with the op. They're going to go for the boost on the rectangle, try to get Stonda. Benji has been spotted, and with an, yeah, with an up at that range, it's not working out too well. Now it's going to be up to Sype. He'll bring down Alu. I believe they know that Yuho's on the site as that bomb was planted, and they haven't seen anyone leave the vicinity. And, ooh, he takes a lot of damage, but, wow, peeking quickly off the other side. Yuho brings down Robin. Now it all falls onto the shoulders of Sype. With that op still, keeping it out. Nice shot onto Stonda. He knows that Yuho's low, tags him again, but pulls off the op. I'm not sure why, but it doesn't matter. He hits the shot. Wow. 3K for Sype and 4-0 start for Dendidi here on Cobble, which was the map pick of Ents, if you are just joining us. I mean, that's that's a tough one for Ents, right? I mean, they got the two initial kills on the round. Zart, you know, pretty much picking apart the B-bomb side. He caught a counter boost player and he killed Long B. So, you have Ents setting up for a 5-on-3 B take. You think that they should win that, but really nicely done for Ridman there. Three kills on the round, including that 1v2 clutch at the end. So just denying Ents rounds right now is the NDD. They're up 4-0 from the CT side of Cobble. This is really a nice start for this map, considering that most people kind of favor the T side these days on this map, as we do see Ents setting up for yet another B execute. Robin and Berg will be in the area. Zenda also, of course, playing the drop down room. And Berg is going to boost up. Nice flash, though, prevents him from getting up there. We'll see if Ents can take the site. Oh, wow. They actually dropped the boost. It was never spotted. They are not aware that two people are hiding beneath the wall. And what a nade. What a nade from Robin. That was sick. Put this guy on a basketball team. And another one going up. That's a bank shot from Berg. Really took him down. Alu somehow. Hitting shots through a smoke, maybe as it was dissipating, created a one-way. And a third nade is the charm. Give him two points. Dennis Ridman with the nade on to Zart. NDD, pretty solid start to this game. This is about as good as it gets. Not only have they obviously won all their rounds, but last round they didn't lose a single player. They also had several other rounds where they only lost like one or two players. It was only the fourth round where it came down to, you know, Ribbon alone. So that means they've been able to pull a pretty good amount of cash, which means their first loss won't immediately lead to a save. And if they can win this round clean as well, they'll they'll even get maybe another round out of that money-wise. So Ensis is really fighting an uphill battle at this point as they do force up if they can this round. Some Tech Nines, even a, a you know, sawed off coming out here for Yuho. But this counter boost again, and they're gonna line them up. That's two kills there. This is already almost in the books. Yeah, this is a really, really poor start for Ents. And so far, they haven't shown us anything. They just keep trying to go into B. They're like, this should be working. Let's keep on trying. But no, it's not. Dendity are denying everything Ents can do at the B yeah. site. And it is perhaps time to try something different. Maybe so, but at the same time, b solid B hits on Cobble should kind of be your bread and butter. I mean, yeah, you definitely can throw in your A hits. I mean, some of the this Brazilian teams have certainly showed us that. Dignitas recently has showed us that under MSL's direction, the ability to be able to do A splits and, and find success with it. Um, but I feel like B's got to be somewhat your staple, kind of your go-to, since it's so powerful. But every time it's has done it, they've been absolutely completely shut down. This time, they'll have a bit more utility and firepower to work with. They'll have their full AKs. Yuho needs to wake up. He's been so big for them this tournament. He's 2-6 and six right now, and he's one of their main entry fraggers, so you gotta hope that maybe he'll, he'll show up at some point if Vince wants a chance at this. Here comes another full take. Everything going down. Another smoke to go out, and uh, Incendiary. Berg saying, come on, run through this. And they're blind, and so actually they have not gone, so they will not trek through the fire. Flash is gonna go out. They will wait, but Berg is right here, able to get one. That's bomb down. A4 spray through Rectangle. Oh, nearly connecting onto Yuho. Well, did connect, but it wasn't quite enough to bring him down. Two in the site. Beautiful peek out from Zenda, nearly getting them both, but it's Zart that will stay alive. Now Robin at the rock. Oh, that nade doing a ton of damage. Easy pickup for Robin. Stonda, though, not too hard of a shot for him either as he peeks out. Spots Robin in the open, trying to approach, and it's Alu who has made his way in on the flank. And it looks like Ents poised, yep, for their first round win here. Six to one. Time to yeah. stop the bleeding. Yeah, I mean, it was finally just Ents being able to put together a round where they were able to trade evenly. Like, they, what, they weren't allowing someone from Dindy to just have, like, a big multi-frag round on an initial hold. Not only that, but the way Alu slipped in from behind at the very end of the round, that 2v2, was kind of the key point in the round. Had he not have done that, the retake from Dindy was actually looking kind of dangerous there for a second. They were getting themselves in a spot where they could just strip that away from Ents, but Alu prevents it. 
But now Ents, they need to worry about their economy being reset. They lost a lot of players that round, only surviving with two. So a lot of rebuying taking place and their economy wasn't much to begin with. So they really need to put this one together if they want to avoid, you know, another save and NDD, you know, winning the half, basically. At least. Yeah, and it looks like Ents just really needed for their for their mindset this match needed B to work before they were gonna do something else. Cause immediately B works and now we see them poised for an A split. And uh, no one even at connector, just two at long, three in the mid room, and well there's Benji at wood, able to bring down one, but Sunny getting both of those entries, finds Benji through the boards and a beautiful shot onto site. Yeah, I mean, you want to want B to work because you want them to be cautious about only playing it with three, maybe cheating over a fourth player, weaken up the A defense a bit. That's exactly what Ince is able to do with a successful B round. But just some great kills by Sunny, really. Coming up the mid slope is what really dictated that round. And Den DD is already pretty much content to sit back and save. I mean, they have a little bit of money in the reserves, but they don't want to have to tap into it. Because if they did, they would kind of have a mix by next round, to be honest. It wouldn't really be full and healthy, so this is kind of required to make sure they can contest next round. Meanwhile, it's very important for Ents to win a clean round, start building up their own bank. So now with a couple of rounds in a row, Ents are finally starting to wake up in this game. Yeah, Zart seeing himself at the top of the scoreboard is like, boys, what's, what's going on? Not used to being up here. Sunny, though, is trying to retake that throne. Those are two nice entries onto the A site. Definitely secured the round. I mean, he gets those kills and everyone else on Dendity saves, as you mentioned, so that they can't have another full buy here coming into round nine. Let's see what Ents will do. If they'll continue to mix it up, if they'll maybe want to attack A again, or just play a slower default. This time, everyone's spreading out. Bomb's still poised to go into those B halls, or museum, as I like to call it. But three men actually watching outside of long A. Yeah. Well, I'm also heading he, that way too. Yeah, looking to see if anyone's going to give him something for free, but Nitty's been, been pretty passive over here on the A side. You haven't really seen him push up the A halls. You haven't even really seen anyone go into mid room <clears> and actually try to pick out in the, the mid courtyard. They've been pretty, uh, you know, satisfied with just kind of sitting back and waiting it out. As Ence is going to press up long A halls, but there is Ridman here right in the corner, so you might have a chance to surprise someone. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a one kill spot. It's a little more awkward if they come up drop, but if they're just... Okay, yeah, and there you go. One came up drop. Now you got to try to cross, and Ali will not let you escape. Nice headshot from him. Opening pick around Benji. Can even right back up with Stonda somehow getting in there. Would love to have seen that from his perspective. Must have been quite the shot as Benji was falling off, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, Berg throws down uh, some fire to stop them from encroaching up on that wooden fence. Zenda might be able to get one more. He's got to reload. Alu's so low. And no, he doesn't reload. Actually pulled that gun back out with zero bullets. Alu puts him out of his misery. Second kill of the round. And I there mean, you go. And it's three in a row now. Thonda's op frag right there was probably the highest impact frag of the round. If, if that op on Benji stays alive inside the site, with the amount of damage that Ridman did to those two players, and the fact that the retake was setting in, that could have actually been really difficult for Ents to hold off, as weak as they were. And you have an op that you have to deal with inside the site. Um, but Stonda catches him right as he was falling down. And uh, that was a really, really big frag. As now we see Ents with three in a row. So they're beginning to establish themselves now in this first map of the series. Din DD money is beginning to run dry now. I mean, they force up what they can, which includes a Famas and just a Deagle onto Ridman. A loss here would certainly mean a save next round and a real good chance for Ents to start working towards that tie. So, I mean, this has just been a big recovery for Ents after quite a slow start. It looks like they are gathering up for another just kind of typical B hit. See if they can make that work again. They made it work last time. And Ents, their money is in a very good position even if they were to lose this round. While that would put them further behind in rounds, they'd still be able to have a full rifle. They've built up a, a ton of banks, so... Really important for Ents just so that they can break the economy of Dendity. And they're going to go right back to this B hit. And I think Robin is still up on the tree. Yeah. I don't know if they've contended the B uh, site with Robin up there too often. And so he's going to be above the smoke. No one else stays in front of the smoke wall, though. They all kind of back off. So it's Robin's make first contact. And now with a lot of support, Zenda getting a few, but Sunny. He'll beat Robin out on the tree. Alu now coming out of drop, takes down the player at rock. I think that might have been the one guy with the deagle, so it wasn't too hard for Alu to find both of those kills. And now it's just Benji was watching the drop in case they wanted yeah. to take things to the A site. 
That was a really nice tactic from Ents. I like that. I mean, you're, you're throwing that smoke wall on the B bomb side. So what you're you're doing is because usually you have like one player dedicated to drop down room, right? And you have like one player dedicated to long B platform. And so that means your third B defender is usually floating somewhere in the middle. Like he's kind of an assistant to whoever needs it uh, at long B or drop down room. But when you throw those smokes, you force that float to honor the fact that you're probably coming out long B, which means you're just leaving that guy by himself drop with almost no support. And it's, you know, just loads up drop down and really splits the B bomb site well with it. And they get themselves another round. Benji getting a couple of kills here to save this M4, but Ents really building up a nice half now. Yeah, Zenda nearly got two people actually. He was the, the drop room defender, well, in the secondary room. Um, I almost would have liked because I believe it was Robin up on the tree. He had. No one stayed in front of the smoke wall. Like, uh, the player that got smoked off on site could have either went in chicken coop, kind of stayed site, but he decided to fall back behind the, the smoke wall. Uh, I almost would have wanted Robin to just hide behind the tree and focus on drop. Just let him come out along B, kill the people coming drop, and then retake onto the site. And yeah. I don't think there's any way they get out of drop room if Robin turns around. I, I mean, I think it's hard to read that though. Like you're really expecting heavy long B when you see all those smokes. Yeah. Um, it, it's kind of hard to make. But they that gave read. it up, so like give it up fully. Don't just yeah, try to true. have one player defend everybody. But yeah, yeah I, I agree. That's so just putting a lot of weight on that tree boost working out, right? This didn't happen for him, so now they'll just be forced on CZs and this 1M4 that Benji was able to save. It's going to be a B hit again, and everyone's already here. So this could work out well for DDD. The big thing is, how boost. fast can Yuho get this flank off? But hey. Well, look at Robin flanking now. He went up on the boost. Berg is distracting him at long B. There's a chance that, yeah, Robin, they even turn around to watch it. Flank is coming in. Now it's Sunny. Oh. Now Zenda's also gone over. He gets a kill with that Deagle. Has picked up the op. And whoa, a round that maybe they shouldn't have lost. This was just a force up. Look at Benji once again lurking in the connector. He'll get the kill onto Yuho, and now it's up to Sunny all alone and on 5 HP. He's going to go to Hogwarts. Yeah, going to the hourly. Maybe he'll find Hedwig up there in a note from Lurpus <laughs> saying, hey, boys, let's, let's, uh, let's get some more rounds here. Let's study anyway. some magic. I will say that was just kind of unfortunate timing and, and a thought process for Ents because what happened was is Yuho had a flank at long A and he walked all the way into A site to door spotting no one. So the thought from Ents is, is, okay, let's back off of B. It's clearly a stack here and let's get back to A with the bomb. Yuho has control of the site. But unfortunately for them, that counter boost from, I think, two players, was it not? Zinda with the Deagle as well as one other player. Maybe it was... Robin went uh, up Robin. first. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you have two people counter boosting you and they get kills, so they basically cut into his fallback off so they couldn't get back to A. And so that means that Yuho is just kind of useless in the A site because no one can get to him. Uh, and the bombs cut off from him as well. So that was just kind of this the, the timing of CSGO sometimes, man, just gets you. Timing strike. Yeah, really was that round. So Dendity break a bit of a dry spell there. That was four in a row for Ents. Dendity striking back. We talked about how important that round was. They had spent everything. If they lost, they would be quite broke. And Denji, whoa, actually gets him through the wall. Maybe it was just a leg. Either way, the result is that Yuho's on 18 HP. That's going to pull type back a little bit. Benji flashing over the ramp. And wow, A-Sight has pretty much already been taken. Benji better be very careful. Man in the sight. I think that was Alu that had already jumped up. And that could be a problem. Bomb goes down even. And that's just all retake right now for DendD. Everyone, Everyone was at long A and they got just completely juiced. Yeah, now Benji even gets hot, so he's not able to do anything with the op, and this side is most likely going to be held. Yeah, you already see Zinda and Berg just getting out of here, so just really well done. And it was a team effort. Yuho, Zart, and Sunny all coming in with kills. Saw Benji just trying to sneak around and stay alive to make a play with the op in the latter part of the round for the retake, but not able to do so. Doesn't get a single frag. It's caught. So Ants, I mean, are going to reset Dendity's economy now. Yeah, and imagine they're not in a good spot. That's why Zenda and Berg immediately run away to save these guns so that they can have something. Majority rifles. Benji's actually loaded at 7,400. So he's, he's good to go. Uh, Berg can drop a proper rifle. Uh, the other man who saved will have to drop a FAMAS, I think. Or maybe there is enough if they sacrifice some nades. Either way, it won't be an easy round for Ents. They're going to still have to uh, to play their best. 
Gonda with an off now. He's four and seven. Let's see if he can't turn that around, getting his uh, iconic gun back in his hands. As we are going to see Ants just kind of going back to their their default here, just really watching to see if there's going to be any type of long A pressure, leaving Zart and Sunny alone over here at B to begin with. And this is good. Like I said, just controlling those A halls, denying info, forcing people not to really be able to rotate the way they want to safely. Not a bad way to approach the map. All is clear thanks to Yuho now. Mid room, danger, long A, all now in control events. Yeah, going for this boost though, on the the L wall, as I like to call it, uh, at the A site. That's Robin that goes up. It's the man that's been also being boosted in the B site, so I guess this guy just gets boosted. He also went up the counter boost Whoa. to drop, noticing a trend here. And the site will hold the site. Zenda now getting flashed and pressured into drop. Sunny finding the opening frag there. Berg passively watching from the uh, A connector. And that's going to leave Benji kind of alone at the B plat. He's going to have to focus on drop and long B. Or neither, because we can see that Ents is all about to head mm -hmm. to A. Yeah, Berg has already floated over, though. He's that third guy. He's already on the balcony. So they have decent positioning here on Vin DD. But Robin gets caught trying to drop off his boosted position. And Ents just clear out the site from that point forward, leaving Benji just to save his op over at B. So, I mean, the resurgence of Ents here in the latter part of this first half has been impressive. They have won, what, now six of the last seven rounds? So really looking good now. Well, Robin got his one kill from his boosted position, but he tried to make the play dropping off onto the slope, kind of surfing on the wall and, and looking to get the shot, but he got legs. Stonda just pulls out the pistol, finishes him off. He maybe should have just backed off the wall towards the long A side and, and held a crossfire with his teammate who was in sight. I don't know if either situation was going to be amazing, uh, but good on Ents to not only come back in this game, but doing it pretty convincingly. And here they are just swarming into drop once more. I believe that was the SMG leading the charge. It will fall to the 5-7, but it looks like Ents have definitely secured the B site and more than likely the round. Then DD now going to set up for some exits, see if they can't save a rifle. So it will tie seven all. Then DD just better hope that they have just as good of a T side here. I mean, they started off really strong. I mean, they were up at 1.6 to 0. It was looking like they might just walk away with this map with ease, but eventually Ents were able to start breaking through that, that B defense that Then DD was very successful with early in the game. And now that they've opened that part up on the map, they've been able to be a bit more fluid and kind of spread out and explore other other approaches. And so far, pretty much everything they've run lately has worked. No, oh, Berg. Uh, what is he at long B? Everyone's going to exit back into the A site. So, Ents, they escape danger. Trying to find somebody, and no one is there. So, 7-7, seven, seven, we tie up. It's going to come down to the last round of the half to decide who wins the half. And either way, like, it's maybe a little rough just because Dendity started so strong and have since only found one round and Ents have then found seven. So they're kind of ending this first half with more of the momentum. But certainly seven or even the eight rounds is not bad for either your team oh, yeah. or CT side on Cobble. So it's going to stay close. The only big factor I think would, would maybe be the momentum that Ents will now take mm -hmm. uh, into the second half. But of course, one round left to disrupt that a little bit if Dendity can defend. Not that a lot of utility to do so. That and if you win the pistol, you almost take it right back away. Yeah. I mean, seven is, I feel like, an appropriate number for CT top. Definitely nothing to be ashamed of. Just, I guess, in the fashion in which they got the seven rounds is a bit disappointing. Oh, they just what? kind of fell apart here at the end. But it turned on. There's still a hope now, and it's into a four-on-four. Four. Robin's playing this corner position for the first time. But I think Ince usually uses a Molotov to clear it out. So I don't know if he'll be able to actually surprise anyone from this spot. There is a Molotov on Yuho and Sonda, so you think maybe one of them will use it to clear him out. But Benji, in the meantime, has gotten an advantage for his team. Yeah, things are now turning out to be pretty bad. I don't know if they're going to check back at the bench, and Robin is in the game-winning spot. His time was getting low. They were with the man down, so they're checking less things. <laughs> and Robin just wins it for him like that. Finds two kills. Zenda get, got the one from uh, either in drop or on site there, and there they go. They disrupt that momentum a little bit. Then did he win the half 8-7 after starting out super strong on the 6-0. And a chance to disrupt it further, moving on to the pistol here in the second half. Yeah, it's just kind of unfortunate because 
they had been using Molotovs to clear out that spot almost every other round they hit B besides that one. So that one round they don't do it, and uh, and they pay, they pay for it because I mean that was literally the, the play there was how Robin just got behind them. Not to mention the fact that Benji also had gotten a kill kind of earlier in the round that gave them a four on three, that certainly helped. And so despite the fact that Dindy D started to kind of fall apart there at the end, they do close out the half with one more, and so they maintain a lead. Now they go over to their T side. If they can win pistol, they're still in really, really good shape, actually. Like, despite Ince's brilliant efforts to, like, make a comeback there in the first half and put some points on the board and not just get overrun by Din DD, there, there's actually still a lot of pressure on them. Yeah, look at Robin. Massive game thus far, 16 and 11. He's got 100 and we'll round up a little bit, 116 ADR. Of course, Robin was very often getting boosted up into powerful positions of the A site, the B site, even counter boosted to push into the, the B halls. So he had a massive impact. No one else really standing out. And then you even look at the ADR on Ents. I, just, I guess because of the way they started, how rough it really was. They were getting decimated. No one even in 80 ADR, which is pretty crazy. And Alu has the highest with 73.6. Uh, it's two first kills for him, five total for the team. Look at how many first kills Den DD had. With that, it's kind of surprising they even uh, only won by one round. Five compared to the ten, I believe, we have there. Yeah, I mean, there were several rounds where Den DD got, like, an initial pick, but and still were able to come back. I mean, think about that one round where Robin was boosted. He got the initial frag on the round, right? But then the the A split collapsed on them, and then eventually into overwhelms the site. There was a lot of different situations like that. In fact, uh, throughout the game, like you mentioned, some of the counter boost still worked out in the end for Ents. Yeah, and also I guess there are going to be a little bit of less less kills available to Ents because there were plenty around when Dendity saved with three people, and Ents weren't really in a position to to push and and try to kill them. So Alu ends neutral. Everyone else was in the minus KD. Only Berg was in the negative, or in the red, I guess, uh, for Den Didi. But it's a new half. We'll see how it plays out. Into the pistol. Berg has a Molotov, has a smoke. It says to me that they might want to uh, Molotov up that tree boost. I don't know if people would use that on pistol. Maybe those will just be focused to drop. They're all heading off towards B, except for Sype, who will watch any mid pushes. And looks like the mid push might just be coming. Three people out there for Ents. How aggressive will they get? Yuho could be on a big flank real quick if he actually decides to go up drop. Look at Sype holding out. Oh, do, do they check this? Uh, it looks like they do, but it won't matter. Alu checks in and finds a bullet in his face. Now storming out of B. Here's Yuho dropping down. CZ long range. Will still connect on the bird. Caught on the reload, however. And things are going from, well, actually, they even out. Two on two. Thought it was going to be pretty bad for Den DD, but they find themselves some frags as well. And now it's all up to Stonda, one versus two. Benji's already got a double on the round, and he's up on the long plat. Another man at rock. That will be Robin. Stonda doesn't see either of them, and Benji just getting those quick headshots. Goosh into a headshot. That's 9-7 for Den DD. We've got the AK coming out, Mac 10 and the MP7. So it looks like Zenda and Berg are going to be those recon players. And obviously very poor and going for more or less a CT force buy. Everyone upgrades those pistols. Actually, I don't think Stonda did. Of course, he will want the op. Sunny and Alu really buying into this round, putting the armor, the pistols, CZ Deagle, and well, Ents with the Deagle. It's Zart to start it off. But the submachine guns come roaring in and saying, stop. Yuho and Sunny pushing down to the CT slope. Sunny's actually going to go for more. He's going to go into danger. Benji waiting out. Very well done there. And it's Yuho now. All alone with that P250. Franklin. Let's see if he can earn any money with it. There's $300. Can he find any more? Trying to get out with the submachine gun. But the Galil from Sype will shut him down. 10 to 7. Another pretty poor round for Ents. Likely to be a full save. Maybe an upgraded pistol on Yuho or Zart. They saved a decent amount of money. Could be a smooth sailing here and a decent lead of about four rounds after we're done for Den DD. 
Berg will just go for a Deagle. Benji staying on the Mac 10. See if he can't sniff out a stack, of which there is one, but it's, well, less of a stack and more of a death ball push from the CTs, all pushing out into middle. They're going to be quickly on the flank, but I highly doubt that DenDD will not be watching this. Both Berg and Scythe are holding out on the B platform. Poor chicken! Eating a grenade. People eat chicken. Chickens eat grenades. And yeah, flawless round there for DenDD. Good try by Entz. I, I like to see a gamble stack and just a, a play as a whole team on those eco rounds. It doesn't work out for them, but hey, if it did, it w they would have looked like geniuses. And now into the first rifle. How confident is this man Benji? Will he just stay on the Mac 10? He will. Galil also on to site. Not going to be upgrading that. I think Khalil is still fairly capable. See where he's going to be playing with it. In Museum for now. Watching uh, for any of those counter boosts. Ents have already kind of shown their hand on that matter. They will counter boost. Doing it even on the pistol round. Which allowed Yuho to nearly win it, but they didn't. So Den DD now, counting the last round of the first half, have four in a row. Alright, Stonda, is he going to go up or stay on the... No, okay, he will go on to the B platform. It's Yuho being challenged and he finds nothing. The Galil opens it up. And now Benji can upgrade that MAC-10 into an M4A1S, so he's got to be feeling great. Another smoke goes down at long B. That was actually one from the terrorist perspective, so they could cross, but they're not doing it. They're faking this. They're going back to A into the mid-room now. Isberg, Zart's got to be hearing those footsteps, so the call should come out. Sunny wants to rotate. I mean, even that connector door is smoke. Donda still being pressured, misses the shot. Benji picking up another kill. Well, really his first, but he was involved with the trades at drop. Now with a chance to get another, as Scythe has fallen. Berg holding out on the CT slope. That'll bring down Zart. It all falls onto Sunny right now, and there it is. Benji with two, 12 to 7. Then DD, another great start to another half. Let's see if they will continue this and close it out or maybe start to falter like they did in the first half, allowing Ents to build that comeback. Speaking of building, look at this money that Dendidi has built up. Benji on nearly 13k loaded. And Ents, of course, trying to do what they can, forcing up, evening out that money. A couple CZs and armor, and Ents, they love the CZ. I think every single person on this team uses it. At least on CT side. Man, those nades hurt. Yuho does find that opening kill onto Sype and drop, but takes a lot of damage for it. And is he actually going to go up on this B platform? Berg is boosted here on some of the crates back there at long B. He's just watching that very passively if anyone's going to push. Oh, he will drop off. So that means Dendidi know what they want to do. Smoke's going to go out. Yuho is going to try to make the play. I'll jump up behind the wooden box. Molotov's going out to bench, trying to clear it out. Will they work the platform? Zendidi's still not showing us really exactly what they want to do. Zenda's still watching mid. They just don't want to run into a pistol stack. They need to check everything. Because that Molotov went down to bench, and then Yuho, it was still smoked. He slides into here. So Molotov was down. Will they check it? Considering they had already thrown one now. Oh, another one goes in. He tries to peek out, but he's so low already for nades and possibly other flames that they take him down. And that was really the, the round winning position from Yuho. It, it hurts that he's gone down. Still a decent effort from Entz and maybe still a chance. Sunny and Alu are up and alive and kicking. Holding off the back of the rectangle, but God, does it take forever to reload that CZ. The one downside, Alu also here with his. Eight bullets used four to bring down Benji. Two more kills, can he get it? A little bit of damage to Berg. But Berg's not panicking, he'll the headshot and pick up that op. 13 to 7 ends their money will be good enough to get themselves another rifle round. And if anyone is just joining us, this is the Sevo G Affinity Season 9 Pro Placement Tournament. It's actually the lower bracket round. It was going to be a best of one, but the teams did agree to play a best of three, so pretty nice of them. Uh, hit them up on Twitter either the teams or the players, and, and say thanks for the extra entertainment. Also, you can uh, follow the stream here as we're on Twitch for this season. So twitch.tv slash playsevo, give it a follow. Pro placement ends today with this best of three in Europe, another one tonight in North America. 
But the regular season will be starting up on the 18th and regular coverage Sunday through Thursday for the Pro League in both Europe and at North America. So give us a follow as we build back up this channel here on Twitch and now into round 21. A little bit of utility used as they were vying for a position on the map. You can see the boost coming out at the A site. I believe that was, oh, that's Alu actually put up there. Zart supporting him from underneath. So a really strong crossfire on the CT slope. The only thing that's worrying with this setup is no one has long A covered, and that's where Sype is working up first. So this could backfire. Then did he being very patient. See if Robin, it seems like he wants to check it. He does, and he gets the first kill of the hour. They won't expect Zart. He's able to get the one kill, but Zenda easily trading that. Perfect for Dendi. They'll end up in briefly a four on three, but a very quick peek there from Yuho finds Zenda running up the slope. Sunny did so much damage running through the flames. Redman already around the side of the van. Shoots him in the face, so man advantage back for Dendi. Three on two. Stonda trying to hold this angle into sight. Berg will not cross. He plants in front of the shed. Safely, as Benji's already set up an area on the post plant there. Uh, Berg, you don't need to peek that. And here's the opering out. I don't think he'll do it again. They'll look over to the doors, and they go at the same time, peeking off Sight and Van. That's perfect. That brings down Yuho. He could have maybe got one, but no chance on getting both. Donda has to save the op, retreating his only option. Then DD, I mean, realistically are in a place where they could chase this, and, and should chase this, try to get that op away from Stonda. Money will once again not be good. And they've tied the streak. This will be six in a row at the start of both halves for Den DD, getting them out to 14 rounds. And it's only with seven. Terrorists win. <laughs> Tasky man. Minus sunny plus cloudy. Pretty funny. I'm sure no one's come up with that before. So 14 to 7, Ents, yeah, will try to do what they can. Bit of a, a force up, Alu with just a Deagle. Full utility though, Yuho with the Mag 7, which, let's be honest, it's cobbled. The Mag 7 certainly has its place as a, a real weapon choice uh, at either drop or broken wall. You can see on X-ray that he's not a broken wall. Scythe already out to the rock, catches Sunny with the nade out. Oh man, and ends up getting two. There's Yuho showing him. Himself in a drop with the Mag 7, tries to get out, Robin will not allow it, he also finds himself, himself two quick frags, and now we've got Stonda with the op once again, the last man alive. Who knew that was an angle? Not me, but I do now. I don't op, so I'll never use it. And they are chasing this time. Oh, he's pinched in, this is a problem, already in the room, bringing a knife into a gunfight, Berg. We'll put some bullets into Stonda, and that's 15 to 7. Dendidi wins the round. Nice entries by Sight. 15-7. One round left. I don't know why people are opening my door. Um, yes. Alright, we've got two Max 7s again, so it's not going to be really the best situation for Ents here on Cobble. Really starting off rough. What is the next map? The next map is... It was Cash, which was the pick of Den DD. This, of course, the pick of Ents. And the third map, if we need to get to it, will be Train. Den DD taking it slow. Aware that Ents will be spending every single penny that they had available to them. They will be armed and dangerous. They spotted out one, that's Alu. He will fall. To Robin once again finding an entry. Zart now left alone at the A site. Meanwhile, Benji taking down Astondo, so winning that battle. And now Drop being aggressed upon. That's Sunny who tries to go into the window, but taken out quickly by Berg. Five on two, Yuho and Zart. The hopes of Ents and their map one victory Lying on the shoulders of these two. And Yuho's down without a response. Zart will find one kill with the CZ. And that is all he will find. They went for the AK, but, well, barrel spotted through the smoke. Sight takes him down. Great game. Robin top fragging 23 and 14. Benji 21 and 8. So big performances from them. And even Sight 17 and 11. Great KD. Take a look at the scoreboard as it goes up. Let's see. Berg 13 and 9. Everyone positive. 
You can't really ask for more than that. The whole team played great. And meanwhile, everyone in the negative. No one even over 64 ADR. That is, is not rough. Look at Stonda, 28.7, 5 and 15. He was so completely neutralized. Had a big op shot early on to get them uh, some of their early rifle rounds on, on the T side to come back from 6-0. But other than that, they were not even present in the second half. That was rough. And that was Cobble, the pick of ends. Now we move on to Cash, Den DD. Can they close it out in two? I thought it would go three maps with Ents able to take it. We'll see if Cash and Train are any different for them. You're watching this Evo Gfinity Season 9 Pro Placement Tournament here on Twitch. Make sure to give this new channel a follow, twitch.tv slash playcevo. I'm Helium. You can find me on Twitter at Heliumbrella. And Dust was with me a little bit earlier. Some of you uh, who are actually paying attention might have noticed that he stepped out for a second. But I believe he'll be back, and you can get him on Twitter at Dust Stay tuned. Cash coming up after a quick break.